After the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected Mike Evans in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Bucs took Chris Godwin in 2017 to form one of the NFL's best receiving duos in recent memory. After quarterback struggles with both Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Bucs found their stride after signing Tom Brady in free agency, and now they're in contention for a Super Bowl this season. Godwin has always been must-watch when he's on the field, but where do you watch your games and shows? If you were like so many other Americans that are tired of dealing with cable companies, there's a great alternative that can give you the same cable experience at only half the price, called Fubo TV. Fubo TV has over 100 channels, and more importantly, if you're like us, it has full coverage of your favorite sports with all local broadcasters. It has NFL Red Zone, ESPN, ABC, CBS, and more. Everything you need to stay up to date with your teams. Darren loves to stay up to date on everything football, so he has been watching a lot of NFL Network. Personally though, I love watching Fox Sports 1 just so I can watch The Herd with Colin Cowherd. That way I can hear about all things going on in the sports world. Plus, you can record your favorite games with their cloud DVR and watch anytime, anywhere. So if you want to sit down and watch Washington football at random points throughout the day like me, here's your chance. Other streaming services can't compete with the entertainment that comes with Fubo TV at half the cost of cable. Fubo TV is the best option for cord cutters everywhere. Fubo TV is easy to try too. It takes two minutes to sign up and watch your favorite cable channels without a cable box. You can try for free and cancel anytime. Sign up for a risk-free trial of Fubo TV and get 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash JDProd. That's FuboTV.com slash JDProd to start your free trial and get 15% off your first month of Fubo TV. FuboTV.com slash JDProd. Rod Christopher Godwin Jr. was born on February 27, 1996 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He attended Middletown High School in Middletown, Delaware. He played high school football for the Cavaliers and led his team to a 41-7 record over his four years and two high school state championships along the way. Godwin was rated as a four-star recruit and committed to play college football at Penn State. Godwin emerged as a leading wide receiver during his sophomore year after racking up 1,101 yards and five touchdowns. Over the course of his sophomore season, he had 100 plus yards receiving in five games, including a 133 yard effort during the Tax Slayer Bowl. During his breakout sophomore season, Godwin began receiving double coverage from opposing defenses. After he struggled to find his stride at the start of his junior year, Godwin finished with 117 yards receiving and a touchdown against Temple. Then in his final game as a Nittany Lion, Godwin recorded a career high 187 yards on nine catches and scored two touchdowns and a thrilling Rose Bowl loss to USC. It was then when Chris Godwin decided to declare for the 2017 NFL Draft. At the draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers owned the 84th pick in the third round, where they selected Godwin. In his first four years as a pro, Godwin has caught 244 passes for 3,540 yards and 24 touchdowns. And since his sophomore season, he's tallied at least 59 catches and 800 yards a season. His breakout season came in 2019 with James Jameis Winston at the helm. Godwin appeared in 14 games and recorded a career-high 86 catches, 1,333 yards, and 9 touchdowns. Godwin has clearly emerged as a top wide receiver in the league, but how about the 10 wide receivers picked before him? The Tennessee Titans picked Corey Davis out of Western Michigan with the fifth selection at the draft after he set the NCAA career receiving yards mark. It's safe to say that Davis hasn't exactly lived up to expectations in the NFL. The four-year pro has yet to hit the 1,000-yard mark and record more than 65 catches in a season. All told, Davis has tallied 202 receptions for nearly 3,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. He'll hit free agency at the end of the year after the Titans failed to pick up his fifth-year option due to his lack of production. A couple of selections after the Los Angeles Chargers took Mike Williams one season removed from being named first team all ACC while helping Clemson to a national title. Williams dealt with a herniated disc in his lower back early in his pro career. Then after returning, he only started in six games in his first two years. But in 2019, he finally broke out with 1,001 yards and two scores. But after Phillip Rivers left Los Angeles in the offseason, his production went down in 2020. Two picks later, the Cincinnati Bengals selected 
selected John Ross after he set the NFL Combine's 40-yard dash record with a 4.21. Ross's breakout season during his junior year at Washington led to him popping up on NFL draft boards everywhere, since Ross, like Corey Davis, hasn't really lived up to the top 10 hype at all. Ross hasn't caught more than 30 passes in any season, nor has he come anywhere close to the 1,000-yard receiving mark. In 2020, Ross played in three games and recorded two catches for just 17 yards before he ended up on injured reserve. Like Corey Davis, he will hit free agency after the season concludes. Skipping ahead, Zay Jones fell to the Buffalo Bills with the 37th pick in the second round after he had 1,746 yards in his senior year at Eastern Carolina. Picks passed before the Carolina Panthers took Curtis Samuel with the 40th pick. After picking up 54 total catches in his first two seasons in the pros, Samuel doubled his career catch total in 2019 for 627 yards and a career-high six touchdowns. That was only the beginning for Samuel, though. 2020 was his true breakout season as he recorded a career-high 77 catches for 851 yards in just 15 games. That included a 7-catch, 118-yard effort and a loss to the Saints that closed out the Panthers' season. Now we get to one of the NFL's flashiest characters that fell to the Pittsburgh Steelers late in the second round at 62. Coming out of USC, the Steelers took Juju Smith-Schuster. Playing alongside Antonio Brown for his first two seasons, Juju played his best football, recording 169 catches for 2,343 yards and 14 touchdowns. Now, after Brown has been traded, Juju's rose to the top of the depth chart, and his production has been limited since, often seeing double teams. He's caught 100 and 39 passes for 1,383 yards and 12 touchdowns since that while Cups never made a Pro Bowl, he has seriously become one of the most reliable wide receivers in the league, helping out Jared Goff along the way. Only two selections passed before the next wide receiver went when the Titans selected Taewon Taylor with the 72nd pick. Since entering the league, Taylor's flopped, with his best season being in 2018, where he still only caught 37 passes for 466 yards and a touchdown. Since then, Taylor has been traded to the Cleveland Browns and has bounced around between the Browns' active roster and their practice squad. He does still remain in Cleveland, but he's yet to catch a pass for the Browns. Next, the New York Jets selected Ardarius Stewart with the 79th overall pick, just one year after he won a national championship at Alabama. In his rookie season, Stewart only caught six passes for 82 yards before he was suspended for abusing the NFL's PED policy. He was subsequently demoted to the practice squad, and after that, he bounced around to the Oakland Raiders and spent brief time on Washington's practice squad. Stewart did sign with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers of the CFL for the 2020 season, but he has yet to make an appearance in a game. Just two picks before the Bucks selected Godwin, the Denver Broncos swung and missed with Carlos Henderson. Before his rookie season began, Henderson underwent surgery on his thumb and was placed on injured reserve, forcing him to miss the entirety of his rookie year. The following season, Henderson was released after failing to show up to training camp with a quote-unquote personal matter. In 2019, Henderson signed with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as a special teams player, and he's actually signed through the 2022 season. Certainly a bit of a hurt of a miss for the Broncos late. And finally, the Buccaneers selected Chris Godwin with the 84th overall pick. He's been an absolute star with Tampa Bay, and he fits in well with the Bucks' lethal passing attack that includes Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, and OJ Howard. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been one of the most exciting teams to watch this year, and of course, that is going to be because of Tom Brady joining the team in the offseason. Now, of course, Godwin's production has technically gone down under Brady. Jameis Winston was able to throw the ball up at any point, and honestly loved doing so. So his production has dipped a bit under Tom Brady, but it's safe to say that not only has he made the Bucks a better team, but he's also kind of put Chris Godwin more in the spotlight. A lot more attention is going to be on Tampa Bay, because now they have a capable quarterback, and of course, they're on their way to the NFC Championship. And now, Chris Godwin is just one win away from helping Tampa Bay to a Super Bowl. Before the video ends, I'd like to acknowledge that the majority of the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Help us out by subscribing and joining us on our way to 100k, because it's coming fast and you don't want to miss your opportunity to enlist in the JD Army.